Добрий день. Добрий день всіх, всім, хто до нас завітав. Ми сьогодні говоримо про тему брифінгу «Успішна школа, сильний університет. Чому потрібен новий закон України про освіту?» Йдеться про закон України. Ми говоримо про драфт ло, який є after voting in the parliament in the first reading and we would like to hear the information on what could change if the law is approved or is not approved. Mr. Bishop Boris Gudziak, president of the Ukrainian Catholic University, Taras Finikov, director of the International Foundation for Education Policy Research, Volodymyr Begrov, vice rector on Taras Shevchenko, Kiev National University, and Taras Dobko, first vice rector of the Ukrainian Catholic University. We hope that Vil Bakilov, president of Kazrazin Kharkiv National University, will join us. And I would like to invite Taras to take the floor. I would like to start from saying that, just saying a few words. First thing, we always had the situation in the recent years that situation aggravated that between the secondary and higher education there is certain distance and this distance is getting bigger and bigger we have the situation when people who come from after secondary education to higher education are not ready to study there we would like to mention that ukraine has become the world champion talking about the number of those who get to the universities. If the best countries of the world dream about 50-60% of those who uh, go to study to universities, and we have 70%. All our researches show that the higher education cannot compensate everything that people fail to get in the secondary education. We need to cover that gap and put these two sectors of education together. The second idea why we want to talk about that today is the idea that we have to understand all reforms uh, looked uh, always as sectoral reforms. Let's make the reform of higher education, secondary education, or vocational education. In fact, we need the reform of the whole system of education and we need to find the mechanism of uh, uh, approval of all the actions which are to be implemented in general and each, in each sector separately. And the third thing which is very important, we all have to understand today everyone who studies at school has to learn uh, what is uh, useful realistically. A lot of what is taught in Ukrainian secondary school is not as useful. And uh, uh, the lack of interest to education, which uh, children have in the fifth or sixth uh, class, uh, that is the demonstration of that fact. And we need to understand one more thing. Every parent, every family have to look for such uh, ways of behavior that will allow a child to get such an education which would correspond to the um, uh, possibilities, capabilities, and skills of a child. And that's the third thing uh, that I would like to discuss today. Uh, also, the law, which has been uh, voted for in the first reading, are these things included into that draft? Or the legis does the legislation which is approved in the first reading open the road to resolving that? problem, the draft law which is approved in the first reading uh, promotes us in, uh, on this way. What we have is the regulatory norm. These are old things uh, which are more than 20 years old and they are not adequate to uh, today's life. The new model of distribution
uh, 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 the, the system of uh, school education and the system of curricula is uh, what is moving us in the right direction. Thank you. Then Taras Dubko. I would like to start from the advice, advice to all parents and teachers. Again and again, please read carefully this document, New Ukrainian School, and uh, you will see the spirit, the values, the philosophy of the basic law on education. That is the document on the ba on the basics for reforming the secondary education. But that's uh, the document which has a vision, the first document which uh, has a certain drive. We do have the hope that finally we'll be able to create some uh, integral ecosystem in educational sphere where one element will support other elements. Which will have common values. And I do hope that with this concept of a new Ukrainian secondary education, we'll be able to stop what started many years ago. Mostly people started going to the West to get PhD. Then the people started going to get uh, master's degrees. Now uh, more than two-thirds of uh, uh, children after secondary schools go to get bachelor's degrees. I think uh, I'm talking about the universities. The universities should not um, uh, compete just between ourselves, but we need to compete with the whole world for a good um, student. One of the benefits that I see for the university is to change the structure of school. We now have the high school, which will allow us to address several problems. Uh, the children, when they uh, consider the uh, studies at the university, will be more motivated now. Uh, then we will be able to switch to the scheme 3 plus 2, where there are three years of bachelor to, to get bachelor degree and then two years for getting master's degree. And that's thanks to the fact that we have now 12-year uh, secondary education. And also, I hope that we will be able to organize some experiments which are very interesting in the USA where uh, the senior school children who are very capable can select the subjects of different degree of complexity knowing that they want to get uh, the to, to enter the university uh, to a physics uh, department uh, they can take uh, some uh, university subject and pass a credit at school. And uh, this year, the, this will be uh, registered as the um, credit uh, for the university. There will be no more money for the education, but high-quality education costs a lot of money. And then in the senior school, a child who will be able to take the university course, this way will be able to save on education when they go to the university. So there are many benefits. I would like to give the floor to Drasvinikov.
you represent uh, number one uh, university. So this is the best university in the rating of uh, universities so concerning quality. What does this law change? And uh, the main problem of 25 years of um, dependence and uh, education in Ukraine, as uh, Taras Finikov said, is that all the elements are disconnected. And this is really bad, because the elements of the system and the elements of social system where economy, church, education, and other areas included, they cannot be considered separately. So if, uh, so, and uh, Mr. Dubko said that in Oxford maybe uh, also they don't have enough money, even if we cannot compare their situation with our situation. So now we have the world that uh, is um, lacking some resources, and uh, we should think on a systemic level and the law on education. We should view it not only um, regarding schools or higher education. This is a framework for systemic thinking and the framework of social things. Simple example why it is important. Today, we have a good law on education, and in two years, uh, three, um, uh, three, uh, 30 uh, amendments were introduced there, and we all know that it became obsolete at the stage of its development. We should have made more um to improve this law because our society is ready for these changes and that's why at our university we have interesting experience we have experience we have school this is ukraine physics and mathematics lyceum and has the right of the faculty and we see what is going on in the school for talented children we have two colleges and these colleges are not economic or legal. These are optical and the mechanic college and the prospecting college. So uh, the uh, students, they get ready for practical professions. Also, we have postgraduate studies and each 10 uh, postgraduate student undergo training here at our university. And this development of student it provides us with a systemic approach and the step that was made by the Ministry of Education in the context of uh, uh, the campaign. This was um, campaign 2016. Uh, uh, this approach was correct because um, it provided more opportunities to um, students to be. So previously, the students decide where uh, they want to go, and this is the change in ideology, and we should understand that the law on education, it should provide for uh, those who are interested in good education. We see that security is one of the main priority, and uh, school children, students, and teachers, and pedagogists in the broadest sense, and uh, employers, they all need to find their niche. And in this law, it is good that the initiator was the Minister of uh, Education with the support of the Committee of the Supreme Council. And the main is that in the working group, there were the representatives of experts and community from the different sectors, maybe except uh, school children, because they cannot be involved in legal activities. And it is important that uh, while elaborating this law, there should be a framework of uh, possible ways. So, and uh, when 100 flowers bloom, and uh, the China went along this way, and it shows a good development, and we see that this movement 
and the approach of this draft law, it will provide the opportunity to Ukrainian society to choose the uh, ways in one direction, in the direction of development. Thank you. I give the floor uh, Boris Gudziak, Bishop, President of the Ukrainian Catholic University. So if we are speaking about this university, it became one of the best uh, private educational institution. And uh, now we have the opportunity to compare the experience here and abroad. So we would like to hear from you. Is it possible for Ukraine to uh, introduce, to implement these changes? Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you, dear audience, for, this atten for your attention. <clears throat> and I believe that uh, Taras Dubko uh, presented it. it is important because we can see that this uh, law that we should uh, uh, really know what it represents. So I would like to say about the law and about the situation on the whole. Uh, we uh, need to introduce new concepts in our education, and in the last 10 years, uh, there were many weaknesses, a lot of drawbacks, but uh, in the world, there were some uh, really prominent steps were made, and uh, the we have the minister, Lili Grinevich, and she um, proposes this. Uh, sh she um, provided us with this law. She worked on the system of uh, external independent assessment, the system introduced by Ivan Vakarchuk and Taras Finikov, then uh, vice minister on high education. And, uh, Everyone, uh, people know that if they studied well, they know that they can get to the university if they have proper knowledge. And uh, we should thank for this uh, the team that worked in the ministry and who is continuing uh, to work in, at the ministry, headed by Lili uh, Grinevich. And also, she dealt with the law on uh, higher education that uh, had some amendments, but in 2014, um, uh, first months after Maidan, there was the law on higher education, and that was the first step on the way of reforms. <coughs> and Lili Grinevich supported it, and the team of the ministry proposes this new law, and uh, because of different reasons. And uh, there are some attempts to distort the situation, but first you should read the law. And we will see that our education is the place where we can really form proposals that approach us to Western and international models. We should believe that here in Ukraine, well, uh, God will bless Ukrainian land and we may look at our children's literature. And I um, presented our books uh, to French audience, and uh, Made in Ukraine can be a leading trend. And today, our higher education is facing a challenge whether it will move forward. What about quality, competition, freedom? So there are many obstacles, and some people want to oppose changes, but now there are opportunities for young people, for talented teachers, for uh, good managers. They 
have new opportunities and uh, these draft laws, these processes that uh, have been lasting for 10 years, they uh, open new opportunities and opposition often is connected with the threat, but we shouldn't be afraid. We do not have not, uh, we do not have any other option. We should just move forward, and we should just move ahead. So we should um, have consultations, and uh, uh, we would like, uh, we wish that the, the ministries discuss these issues, and we want to greet the Ministry of uh, health uh, that they have the new law and this is the step ahead and there will be a position to this law but we should be firm and we should move forward thank you the MPs should be reading the draft laws uh, that is true and because we are have people from Lviv, Kiev, and Kharkiv. I would like to invite Vil uh, Bakirov, the rector of the Kharkiv National University, president. I am. Uh, I was late because everything's just not moving in Kiev, and I. It took me more than an hour to get here. But I am happy to have this opportunity to be here among the experts and say a few words about the problem that concerns us all. I asked my students, why do we live so badly? Why the country that has so m huge resources, such a wonderful geopolitical situation, location why we are lagging behind of others and uh, the students told me because social institutions are not effective and not of uh, high quality including the institution of higher education another question is why don't they work well and I have answers we our institutions of uh, public health judiciary institutions fiscal work badly because we don't have a strong system of education. Uh, this education is the only efficient instrument to make uh, the society better, uh, to make uh, uh, children more intellectual, braver, more creative, uh, for that, we need uh, different institutions. Uh, and um, with this model, we will not be able to get anything. We need to change the system of uh, education. Uh, we need to change that. Um, and the law that we are talking about is actually the model of education to which we need to get closer. The law describes uh, uh, what we would like to have in the reforms. The reform of the population started uh, from the quality, uh, which uh, it is from the quality that it, it is in now to the one that we want to have. And I talked to MPs who uh, prepared, who promote and improve the law that we have. Education is not um, the mix of different uh, subsections. We don't have the law which would jo uh, put together all the education, uh, which will unite it into one system. This draft law will make it. It allows us to at least see 
what we would like our education to be. It uh, gives us new rules of game, and I can say that any innovation, especially uh, in the sphere which is conservative sphere, uh, meets uh, a lot of resistance, and we see today that there are different movements uh, Certain personalities are attacked, uh, like our minister, but in fact there is a fighting between the old and the new one. And uh, if we do not change the system of education, we will not change anything. We will not be able to change the economy, the social sphere, the political system, political elites. And I believe that today, uh, and those people who want our country to be a prosperous country, they need to have uh, the law and people who defend this law. Before I give the floor to uh, the audience, I would like to clarify, I will not ask you for specific names. Uh, but from what you are saying, there is a resistance to that law. Who will get benefit if the situation is um, conserved? Um, I will try to answer. I believe that there will be many opponents to that law. These are those uh, who uh, were uh, I used to work uh, in the stable forms. Uh, most of people who are in the system of education, these are people who were engaged into this activity for 30, 40 years, and now there's uh, a suggestion to change it, to break it. In this environment, that law which will lead to total change of the way of existence in this sphere will call, will lead to resistance. Also in our country, uh, everything's taken to uh, the level of political fighting. Such things as uh, education, uh, health care, this should be uh, the reason for uh, uniting all political forces. Uh, but very often uh, it is promoted by the representative of one political force. If I'm the representative of another political force, I have to be against it. It's another side of what is in this story. And then there's the third side. Uh, uh, the biggest part of our people, unfortunately, do not think much about something perspective. It's uh, uh, usually as an entrepreneur who plans his activities for a quarter or half a year, or parents who do not think that in a few years the children will graduate, will finish the school. They're thinking about how to resolve the tasks for this month. The no no interest to perspective make people uh, very vulnerable. They become the activists, non-activists who think about the future, but they become the activists of some movement which says, uh, OK, today it would be better to do something like that. We live in this society where everyone is trying to sell easy and primitive solution. Those who sell them, they are against this law, this draft law. I would like to add one more thing. One of the slogans uh, of the university in Pennsylvania was um, uh, 
those without morals are useless. And the education is uh, a classical example which explains why it is so difficult to achieve deep reforms because uh, what is required is the change of mentality. The reforms are not just technical reforms. Uh, you introduce some new computer program and everything will be changed. What is needed is to change the mentality of people and that is always very difficult to do, especially because in our society, which is uh, uh, very much traumatized, uh, this is the process uh, uh, of uh, creating new um, educational environment. Any other comments? If not, then I will give the floor to the audience if you have questions. Next time we will invite the opponents, but we ask them not to bring cake with them. Uh, so it would be wrong to say opposition, because we should try to unite the country, and education can help us to get united, because it's easier to speak about opponents. We should stop in this because uh, otherwise we will just lose the country if we make such separation. Because you know, some um, um, uh, someone wrote uh, 41, 42, 33. So Taras is uh, um, convincing us that there are things that should be common for the whole society. And uh, Taras uh, said that. Uh, we have post-trauma, post-trauma disorder, and we assess everything in terms of politics. We get accustomed to it, that there is a geopolitical things, uh, some really, uh, and we forget that there is not only state. We say state should provide. But this is some sort of post-trauma. Economy of Ukraine and the social sphere is moving due to civil society, not only due to the state efforts. So the opponents, they uh, say that, uh, that there should be supremacy of state and uh, we should see, and we uh, say that we sh should have the supremacy of uh, uh, society, of civil society, and uh, uh, it is the better prospect for the country, because otherwise some bad things can happen. And then maybe they will agree that we should get united and move forward and to, to be responsible for ourselves, not just to wait something from the state. If this is all, thank you for, this, for your participation. And we will ask the journalists and the deputies to um, use these materials and to um, also read the law to um, adhere to the recommendations of the bishop and really read it. Thank you.